People no longer speak on the phone. I don't get it. Why when you meet someone, you you swipe right, you swipe left, whatever you match. You're now talking and dating someone on Hinge. You get their number. They get your number. Why do you two not jump on the phone and chop it up early and see what the two people are about? Every time I say that, I just hear excuses. Oh, I don't want to build it up. This person could be cool on the phone, but not cool in person. Oh, I don't want to tap in because that's a waste of time. I just want to meet. It's a broken record. Why not try something differently? Why not maneuver in a different way? Because if you keep getting the same results, once you want to change the experiment, like y'all are going through a sick lab experiment right now and nobody wants to change the formula. What's good? We are back in the building for another episode of the Furious Robinson Podcast. I'm your host, Furious, your curator of conversations, wordsmith aficionado, voted most likely to have an amazing first date, and we are back to it, dabbling in the dark arts. How long do you think this can get off? When you continue to put the information online, you're putting all the things online. We're studying, we're learning. And this video is going to prove it because you know I'm going to react in real time. And even before I jump right into it, how are y'all doing today? What's good? Drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe, send me an email, all the good things. Do all the cool things that y'all doing for other people. Do them for me. But the biggest one is hit that like button. But let's check it out because I was really looking into this scenario and I was like, What's going on here, right? Because he really broke this down seamlessly. He put this into perspective and broke it down to perf. I was like, geez, dang, he talking like me now. But when you really think about it, y'all are doing this and y'all got to chill. So people are figuring it out. Men are figuring it out. What's good? They want women to chase after them. At some point, ladies, y'all going to have to pick a side. Do y'all like men or not? <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell y'all where y'all fucked up at. I'm going to tell y'all where y'all fucked up at. Y'all need a safe place to where y'all can get together and come up with ideas on how to fuck over men without us knowing about it. Because y'all been putting it on social media for the last five, six years. We know <laughs> we know that y'all go on dates without even liking the dude just for food. We know y'all will get flown out just for the scenery and to take pictures and don't even like the dude and don't even want to fuck. We know that y'all got multiple men and y'all name them different things in y'all phone, like the dude who fix on the car, the food dude, the dude. Facts. And that's a big one to me. When you got a dude in your phone named Nurse Bay, you got Ferrari Bay, you got Miami Bay, you got all these different dudes in your phone. You don't think that looks kind of weird and kind of lame, but I'm a chill. Let's keep it going. Who uh, work at fucking the bank. We know that. So excuse us for being careful with our heart and our money and our resources and our energy. We sorry for watching y'all say y'all going to fuck us over day in and day out, (laughs) but not letting y'all. We apologize for that. And that's a fact. You can't really, you got to speak on it. He's saying nothing but facts. You think you could continue to put these videos online and I'm not just going to look at you like you stupid? Like, we all got common sense. We all adults, right? He said it in the video. We are all here living and learning in real time. So as you continue to complain into your phone and say all these things, you're giving your side. And I'm paying attention. I'm like, ah, this is how you think. This is what's good. Okay, cool. Cool. Because I can't get his side. And if I can't get his side, I don't know what really happened. Because I can put up a ton of videos that show women just doing dastardly deeds. Just women moving in very masculine energy on very savage time. But I'm not going to do it. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying hard not to go down that boat of kicking women's back in because I'm actually trying to figure out what the hell is going on. I'm actually trying to learn. I'm trying to communicate with you women. And I do for sure in the right way. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not here to 
we got to come together. I'm trying to build. You know me. Like, I like a good night, but when it comes to some of the things that are being said online and being done online, I'm like, yo, I would never date you. But I'm not in these situations. I'm speaking to the guys out there that got to deal with stuff like this. I'm like, damn. Like, and it made me think. It really made me think hard because I was like, yo, I remember this was long ago. This was when I was outside. You know, during the pandemic, you go out a little bit, whatever the case may be. And I went on a date. And me, sometimes, and not now, but back then, when I used to go on dates, I didn't care. I would date whoever. I would just be like, oh, you trying to link? What's good? Let's see what's happening. No context before the date. I'm going to hit you up the day of. We never going to talk pre, like none of that. I'm just going to pick one, a cool spot that I know that's a vibe. But I was like meeting people that were saying crazy stuff to me. I was like, yo, I can't be here. If you're telling me that the last guy you dated made you sign an NDA, I don't want to be here. This, this is too much drama for my life. If you're telling me the last guy you dated was able to dupe you out of 10 bands, I'm sorry. I don't, wanna, I don't want the issues that come with that. I'm just, I ain't here for it. If the last guy you dated got you pregnant and now you're like just on the hunt for a new, like, I don't want to be, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance, but it's just not for me because the women that, I like to meet, have good energy. And when you move like that, and when you're having these conversations, the energy is just low. I'm like, bro, I didn't come on a date to hear about your problems. I just didn't. I came to have a good time, a couple of shots of tequila, a little one-two on the dance floor. I'm trying to have fun. This is a night out. I'm not trying to hear your issues. And that's the thing. When you continue to date strangers, you're just running into so many like issues. Or what women like to say, red flags. I'm like, yo, this is a big ass red flag. What can I do here? I can't do anything in these situations. But I digress. But I get back to what he was saying. As you continue to create content, put things online, men don't really agree with a lot of those things. That's a fact. The average guy. Like some guys can understand. I can understand where you're coming from. I can see your point of view for sure. We can agree to disagree. But the average guy is not going to care. They're just not. <laughs> like, like if you start to put all your conversations online, and that's what I'm seeing the trend is now. Like, oh, we met on Hinge. Here's our conversation. Oh, we were talking through WhatsApp. Here's what he said to me. Oh, we were on Bumble. And it's like, yo, why do women stop pillow talking? Like, Stop all the like putting your business online. It's just whack and corny to me, at least, at least to me, I can see it as being a little bit funny. Like, oh, this is wild. And I'll speak on it, whatever the case may be. But I can't, if I'm actually dating you in real life and you just throwing all our business out there, I'm like, damn, I can't, I can't rock with this because now I know if I do anything that may be off putting to you that you don't know how to communicate through. Now you just going to tag me in one of your videos online. And have us both looking dumb. I'm not trying to look dumb in these streets. Like, I just want to chill, have fun. If we don't, if things maybe end bad, just leave it. Just, you don't got to put it online. You don't got to post it later. Like, you could just leave it alone. Like, learn from it. Talk to your friends about it. Whoever you confide in. Talk to family about it. But why does it then have to go online? Because now, in the same sense of women saying like, oh, I'm going to put the negative stuff. Women are putting the positive stuff. So every time a dude buys them this big dumbass bag, they're posting it. When they got a whole roster and they show everything that they do in the roster, same concept. It's all the same things. So to me, I'm like, I'm going to just hold off because I don't want to run into any of you folks. Like it's good women out there. Don't actually, it's great women out there. I know a couple of them. There's some amazing women outside, but the large majority, and it's getting smaller and smaller because y'all are trying to taint all these women to think and operate in this way of just being jaded. It's, it's all on the internet, to be honest with you. And whatever, we are in the matrix. So continue to hit the like button, subscribe, and drop a comment. But as I get back into it, you really got to look at the overarching spectrum of what is the goal. The goal is to hang out, kick it, have fun, meet, have good sex, travel together, build a family, grow. 
going to business, like all the things you want to do with the person you trust and love and confide in. Like, but nope, this culture, whatever we're in right now, <laughs> hey, nobody's serious. Nobody cares. Who cares? Nobody cares. Give it three days. Not even. I give it. I used to say people are on three day contracts. And if you don't get that analogy, when you're going from the G League to the NBA, you get a three day contract. You have three days to prove yourself. If you don't prove yourself in three days, you are getting cut. That's a fact. In the NBA, from the G League to the NBA. And I'm sure there's a lot of contracts that work like this. And one big contract that definitely works like this is dating. Yes. And dating is probably even shorter because everyone's attention span is so small that now you maybe have one to two days to impress somebody, to get them on a date. Then you have to double down and impress them again to potentially have a good night, a.k.a. have sex, have some fun in the sheets. And then in order to repeat that, you have to just continue to double, triple down, quadruple down if I'm using big words, right? Why? It's like you have to appease. You're appeasing to your situation. You meet a nice one. You caught her hanging out in Wynwood. She was vibing. She's into art and culture and fashion. You have to now be into art, culture, and fashion. And you might have to have a couple of bands, as I like to say. You have to have that $200 date stipend, that budget of $200, right? So when you're looking at it like that, how can we, how can we operate and maneuver? Because, yeah, the whole, that's the big thing now. The topic of conversation is having a roster. And if you, it, it went from paying on a first date to your body count. Now it's your roster. We know you got rosters and you keep saying it. Okay, cool. Whatever, legit, respect. You getting a lot of attention from guys. We get it. You don't know which one is the, the Prince Charming. You don't know which one is your king. So you got to have all of them in this basket, just, just rotating them. Like, what are we doing? So, hey. But when you go online and say that, boom, and your TikTok goes viral, your TikTok at 100,000K likes, and then I go through your comments, and all these women are agreeing. None of these women are saying, yo, what's up with that? Just that one solid guy. What's up with that one good guy? Where's he at? You got one to two guys maybe blowing your back out. You got that third guy and that fourth guy maybe just giving you all the attention. Those are the guys that just send you good morning texts and good night texts. They don't really check in. They don't really do too much in the daytime, but they send you a good morning, maybe a good night. How are you doing throughout the day? And then you got that fifth guy and that sixth guy. Those are the guys in your apps. Those are the guys in your DMs DMing you every single day. You know you got options. You know you can go to your DMs. Check in with guy number five or six. Yo, I'm sorry. I was busy. If you tell me that you're busy, I no longer care. That's a fact on everything I love. It doesn't matter anymore if you're busy. You're going to prioritize exactly what you need to get done in your day. I think that's called being an adult. So if your priority is your social life, I'm looking directly at you in real time. My presence is a present. So if we just wasting time out here, okay, cool. I got to chill. I can't be outside like that. I can't, I don't want to do it. I can't be outside. I don't want to be outside because it's just like, we're going to continue to waste time here. We're going to continue to not do anything productive because we don't align. You moving in one direction. You got a whole roster. You got a whole team. I'm moving in this direction. And I'm going to get back to what I was saying because I thought about my point. Those guys in your DMs, those guys that you think are just giving you all this attention every single day, day in and day out. This is why you have a roster. You have a roster of mediocre individuals, and that's cool. These men are still figuring it out. They got a lot to learn. This is five and six on your bench. They're not in the game yet. They're not scoring. Because one and two are good. One and two, you might cook for once in a blue moon. One and two, taking you out on dates. Y'all might travel together, whatever the case may be. And you see that I'm saying one and two, meaning there's two guys in the picture at all times. If women say they have a roster, 
there are two guys in the picture at all times. There's the guy that is giving her that true affection, that love, that that's, you know, that what you need type of information. And then there's the guy that is somewhat toxic. He's not right there yet. And he's blowing her back out, stigmatized to the umpteenth degree. And those are the top two guys in her situation ships. This is plural information. So, yo, I'm just looking at it like, yeah, I don't want to tap in and you don't need to. If I'm giving a little bit of healthy communication and advice around this situation, just take a step back. You don't need to be around these folks. These folks are low vibrational. You're just going to waste a lot of time, money, and energy. Do not do it. Don't do it. Listen to me now. If you do anything that I say in these videos outside of hitting the like button is do not do it. Once women and men start to tell you things that do not make sense to your brain, that's called fight or flight. And what you need to do at this moment in time is flight. You need to run and move in the opposite direction as expeditiously as possible. Fast as possible, quick. Speed should be your nickname at this point. You need to move out the way, move out the paint, as I like to say. But it's like, yo, What can you, you can't navigate these situations anymore. You really cannot. How are you going to navigate this situation? Because I see it from both sides. I see women saying one thing like, oh, men don't treat me right. This guy did this. This guy did that. He told me this. And then he did that. He dated my friend. He made me pay. (laughs) It's so much complaining and it's so many rules. I'm like, yo, why would I even try to be in that? It's like the SATs in high school. Nobody's trying to study for all. It's so much on this test. (laughs) This test has so much information. Why would I want to study for this? I want to go to college, right? I do. I want to go to college, but I don't want to take this goddamn test. Is it this much studying? And that's how I'm looking at it. I'm like, bruh, I want to have a good time. I want to have fun. I want to eventually build, but I want to get to know you first. And that's a fact, but I'm not going to take this wild test. You're going to put me through to actually get there. It's like expectation this, expectation that. Damn, can I get to be known as a man? (laughs) Before we get into my finances, before we get into what I do for work, like just me, that's it. How am I doing is a good start, but Hey, people will say I'm projecting. I'm not happy at all. If you talk to me on the internet, <laughs> yo, I ain't even gonna hold you. People be like, bro, you're not. I'd be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but I'm chilling. I, I digress. So I was supposed to go on a date. Um, and 15 minutes prior, he canceled on me. So, you know. And he said, ring check. And I said, no, I respect my time. There won't be a next time, but good luck. Oh, no. 15 minutes prior. That is sick. We live in sick times. Cuz was like, man, I don't even want to do it no more. And that's the, that's the crazy thing. That's the tough thing about dating right now is there are so many options. If you like, because I'm just going to go out on a whim right here. I'm going to judge a little bit. Shorty seems very wholesome. Like, just very nice and pristine and clean. Very granola, very beaver cleaver, as I like to say. And Cuz probably wanted a wild night. He was like, damn, she don't look like the one. We ain't really talk all week. I met her last week. We set up this date. It was just like, whatever. She was looking good. She was in a bikini in Hawaii. Whatever. The date came. The day came. Oh, he was like, I'm good. Whatever. And that's a tough thing. When you really don't know people, when you really don't know these folks, they're strangers, your brain won't stop you from doing anything that you don't really care. You know, I don't know her. We never met. I can't really assess her emotions because I don't know her. I can't assess his emotions because I don't know him. Who cares? So we are really dating in a who cares mentality type of situation. It's like, whatever. So I look at it like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm not giving these folks my time because if you feel like 
that disrespectful because the level of disrespect she just got. And that's when you know it's real. If a woman takes her life to TikTok or IG to cry, complain, and talk about dating, it stung. <laughs> it stung just a little bit. That's a fact that this is based in satire. I'm not making fun of her. I'm just saying, yo, it stung. If you're that butthurt that you got to take your information to the TikTok, Jesus Christ, you got to step back. Step back from dating. These boys are not for you. These gentlemen are not for you. You are not going to win in these streets because we are playing stupid games and we are winning stupid prizes and no one seems to stop playing. So, hey, take some accountability or continue to get played. It just is what it is, right? You got to be at that point. You, you know what time it is and you're going to say, because I'll see women say it all the time. I'll see women say, oh, I got back on the apps. Oh, dating apps are boring, but I'm here. Oh, I'm just here for a good time. I don't know. what, Like, just no intention. If you have no intention, what do you think is going to happen? You think you're just going to find Prince Charming on a whim? Like, oh, Harry Styles just going to pop into the apps and take you out on this magical date. You're going to lose this glass slipper. You're going to go back to like. Come on now. <laughs> what are we doing here? I don't know what we're doing anymore. That's why I continue to make fun of it because I'm just, I'm thoroughly confused at this point. It's just like, okay, whatever. Cool. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Right. So, I mean, she can be mad. She, that's tough. Like 15 minutes is tough. But at the end of the day, we don't know these folks. So they have the opportunity to do whatever they like. And if you're communicating in the right way, you got to give that dude some feedback. You got to tell him like, yo, this wasn't cool. This is some lame ass shit. Right. But she's not. She's not saying that. She's not saying, oh, this is corny, lame and whack. She's wishing him well. Why? I don't know why people do that. This is one thing I do not do. If you disrespect me via communication, I'm not wishing you well. I don't care how you feel after this. Why would I care? So if you disrespect me in any aspect of ghosting me, leaving me on red, not texting me back in a timely fashion, we set up a time and you 30 minutes late, whatever the thing is, there's always this little thing that messes up the whole energy of the dating spectrum. And then it goes left. If you do any of those things, I'm nine times out of 10, probably going to ignore you. I'm not going to block you because I want you to see how great my life is after the fact. So you can realize how you messed up. But outside of that, yo, I'm not. Have a great day. Wishing you well. Hope you get that job. You Like, I see that and I'm like, me? Moi? <laughs> and I'm speaking from a place of privilege. Cool. I think I have a little bit of attractive people privilege, a little bit of communication privilege. Like, I can communicate in the right way. But it's like, bruh, when we do that, it's no point. It's no point at all. To stay in some of these situations. But y'all continue to be nice. Be cordial. Oh I'm gonna. And yeah man I didn't wanna. Cool. Do your thing. But don't involve me. You see where I be at. I be inside. Because it's no point. I'm not. Man you think I'm messing with y'all folks. Come on bro. And we off that. I'm not gonna continue to speak on that. But this one. <laughs> this is why I say you have to compete. Because once this guy in this video does this. That's where I step in and I change the whole scenario or not even me. Take me out of it because there's tons of guys that do live in way better lifestyles than me. That's a fact. So these guys will take over the situation in a heartbeat. And I'm just going to continue to tell you, you can't move like this because I want to say I'm on her side. Let's see. Let's see what's good. Let's see what's good. I'm not going to speak on it too early. We got to see because sometimes I watch these videos, don't know what's going so on. And then me at me today, right? And I was like, <laughs> let me reply back because I don't talk to anybody and that's by choice. Um, but I get bored. So it's like, why not entertain it? You know? Okay. So then today Boredom. he asked me, what am I doing today? I bought it all. And I'm like, you know, nothing. Really? <laughs> like, how about you? And he was like, you know, like maybe we can hang out. And I was like, sure. What do you have in mind? I wasn't going to chill with him, but he was like, oh, like you can pull up. See, I'm not. OK, like I said, low vibrational right then and there. You know, you're not about to chill with this man. You know, you are not about to do anything with this guy. 
Why continue to communicate? Why continue to waste both of your time? Like, why not just say, yo, bro, you're not really my speed, but I appreciate, you know, you, whatever. I appreciate the compliment and keep it moving. If he continues to shoot a shot, ignore him. But nope, let's see where it goes. Up on me and we can smoke. <laughs> see, this is the fucking problem. I don't give a fuck. I'm a grown ass woman. You are not about we to are hit on me up. Wait, Talking about wait. some pee up on you. <laughs> Yo, he said, come through and smoke. <laughs> we were on Savage Time. Respect, brother. City boys, we up. All right, now. I see you shooting your shot. Come through and smoke one. What is this? What is this? How old are we? I'm not no high school girl. I'm not. No, I'm not no little girl. If you want to hang out with me, you are going to pull up on me. And yeah, I expect a date because what the fuck? You want to hang out with me, right? I'm not about to pull up and chill with you in your little corny ass room smoking an L. I already know how that shit about to go. We about to what, smoke an L. You put on some Netflix and next thing you know it, you trying to fuck. Like, come on now. Moral of the story is learn the <laughs> difference between a little boy and a man, a real man, okay. a gentleman. Okay, ladies, learn the difference because there is a big ass difference. And the, and when I'm talking about little boy, I'm talking about maturity. A lot of these little boys lack maturity, emotional, Jeez. mental. I she met men facts. before that were like 35 years old, but still had the mentality of a 17 year old. And it's like so fucking sad because it's like, grow up, babes. And a lot of us settle because we don't like to be alone. And I get that. Facts. But Winter time. I'd rather be alone than <laughs> be with someone that does not care about my needs, my wants, and doesn't treat me like how I deserve to be treated. Because for all that, I'd be alone and I can do all that shit for myself and Facts. make myself happy. Fuck you. Like, what you <laughs> Okay, she OT right now. I got to stop it. She said, fuck you. <laughs> she was getting hot. But no, that's a fact. She's speaking all facts. Yo, remove yourself from the situation. One, girls was bugging. You know that's not going down. You jumped in her DMs, which means you don't have your her number. And you really probably don't have a chance in hell. You are shooting a half court shot right now. Maybe damn near full court shot. Thinking it's going to go in. But cool. You get the response. You get the response you want from that. What he should have done was say, yo. I saw this little spot. I think you might like it. You into X, Y, and Z food. You into Brazilian food. Let's go get some Brazilian food real quick. Lead with food, then put on the charm. If you really want to have fun, I don't know. Do whatever, do whatever y'all want to do. I, this ain't advice. This is the podcast about communication. Hit the like button, drop a comment, and subscribe. But what I'm saying is you can't say first quarter, come through and smoke one with me. Although that's what we all want to do. That's what we all really want. We just want someone we could chill with, hang out with, smoke a little bit, drink a little bit, you know, whatever the case may be, kick it in real time. But we're all dating strangers and we're all being recycled. So we're not going to ever get to that point. Most people aren't going to make it there. They might make it there for a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. But at the end of the day, you'll be right on TikTok complaining into your phone. But <laughs> anyway, I digress. So what she's saying is like, yo, you got to court me. You got to be a real guy. You got to grow up. And that's what I'm saying. Essentially, I say it all the time. You have to appease to her needs. So, yeah, you take her out once. You take her out twice. And then I'm not saying that just so you can just rage on these women and be on savage time completely. I mean, do whatever you like. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to have that bag to secure some of these women, meaning inviting them outside. And I'm not even going to say on adventures because a lot of people took, <laughs> got mad when I'm like, oh, you're trying to go on adventures. Yeah, you are, but I get it. You're trying to go to dinner. You're trying to be courted. I can agree to disagree, ladies. I can understand where y'all are coming from. So sure, especially in her point, because if a woman invited me to her house on a first date and she was like, hey, I don't really know how to cook, but I can roll a joint. I'm going to be like, bro, I'm not coming over there. Like, I mean, that's just me, though. I don't be jumping into situations like that. A lot of guys would take her up on that offer. You know what I mean? But I'm looking for a little bit, you know, something different. So when you're looking for different things, you at different stages in the game. Y'all might be at level 10. I might be at level 15. You never know. And I could have went on the deep end and just been like, yo, I'm on level 100. But Elon's like on level 1,000. So, you know, it's levels to this game, right? 
And I say that to say this, yo, as we continue to date, you got to really elevate and boss up. It's a competition at this point because right when he did that, right, <laughs> he messed up. He's in her DMs, boom, whatever. Right when he said, let's smoke a L, let's smoke a J and just chill. And she picked up on it. She's been there. She's done that. She's no longer playing checkers. She's playing chess. And she understands that she has the leverage because she has the box. She has the poom. She has everything that men like, right? In a sense, to a degree. So when you look at it like that, you really got to break it down and be like, damn, he dropped the ball. He fumbled. Seahawks in the Super Bowl, they definitely lost the game on some stupidness. So when you look at it like that, I'm thinking, okay, just step in and assert. As a guy, all you got to do is be like, yo, what's good? You want to go to Nobu? Cool. Right then and there. That first Nobu date is just the, just keep it chill, have fun, eat, drink, laugh, banter, as they like to say, all the good things. The second date, do something light. Take it to the park, maybe go to the beach. Go on a nice little, just a vibe, maybe a nice jazz vibe at a lounge, something low key. And then do whatever you want from there. That's it. Free game. Because, yeah, the the whack dates and all that stuff, you got to compete. You got to compete with guys like me. I got to compete with guys that are just in another echelon. And it don't matter where you sit on the spectrum because women date different age ranges, different social classes. They date in guys in college, right out of college, high school, grown men. I saw somebody I used to talk to. This is somebody else you talked to a long time ago. <laughs> even this story before I even tell it is make, bro, I saw her with a dude that was like damn near 50 or maybe about, I was like, right, yo, is it that bad out here? Is it that bad out here? And I get it because the video that I saw, it was elevated. It was like her, the old dude, and they were in like a BMW. I was like, damn. Um, but then I was like, damn, this dude old as hell. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> These old ass dudes y'all dating, man. If y'all don't get out of here with that, I am sick. To me now, I look at people who, are, who aren't in the same age range. Very strange. Like if you're somebody that's 40, dating somebody 20, I'm like, bro, get the fuck out of here. Or you got to chill. I like to see people that are around the same age range. Because if you're not, I'm just like. Damn, who didn't figure it out? Did the older guy not figure it out? Or did the young girl not figure it out? Or vice versa? Like, did the old lady just like out here fresh out of a divorce and trying to find herself again, like on some Stella got a groove back? Or like the young dude just got like a fetish for old ass? Like, what is it? You know what I mean? That's what I think. Cause I'm like, bruh, it's so many people out here. If you can't find somebody, never mind. I'm not gonna shame people for dating who they wanna date. I don't really care. I just made that seem like I, I'm not going to get into all that. We going. <laughs> I just got so off topic. My bad. I apologize. If you thought that wasn't cool, hit the like button. If you thought that wasn't cool, I'm just saying. But no, we got to look at it like this. I think it goes back to the to the start of the video where this guy is like, yo, y'all putting all these keys out for, here for me. I know the dude who appeased you with all the things. Maybe, and this is a tough thing, and this is where guys sometimes flunk out of class. This is not a good thing, but I'm just going to speak on it. When guys see how many situations you've been in, because you continue to put it on the gram and you continue to talk about it, they fall out of interest. They just do, and it just devalues you as a It's tough. I'm just speaking to the truth. It devalues you as a woman. So as you continue to put all this information out, you in the Bahamas, booty out, titties out. I'm not going to say anything, and I don't want to say it in the wrong way, but a lot of guys be like, mm, and they just bring you down a notch. And then you get on TikTok and complain, like how a guy ghosted you. They bring you down another little notch. And it's tough. Because then women get online like, yo, this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. X, Y, and Z. And it's, it's actually true. Because it doesn't really matter because when you meet people, ideally, this is not what we're getting, but ideally, you should be meeting them as their true self, as their vulnerable self, 
but you're not because the last dude just played them. The last dude just did something crazy to him. And now you got to step into the situation and appease to kind of clear all that dust away. You just mopping and scrubbing the floors right now. As you continue to take her on dates, you just clean it. You just clean it, trying to get everything polished up, trying to get everything ready. It's tough. Okay, you guys, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this. Take me seriously. I just don't think I can take my dating advice off TikTok anymore. It's just getting too confusing. Like, I'm confused. Today, one girl's post was like, the safe guys are the ones who post bad Instagram photos, like ones where they don't know how to pose or they look ridiculous and they hardly ever post. And then I saw the, this other one this morning that was like, the biggest red flag, sorry, the biggest red flag is when they wear hats, like baseball caps, like all the time. If a guy's always wearing a baseball cap, they're not a good guy. And then there's like all this advice about letting them, let the man pursue you because you're the woman, you're supposed to be submissive. If you're the one pursuing them, then they don't really like you, blah, blah, blah. But then there's more advice saying that if a guy is going after you, that's what they're used to and they're the player type and they're not a good guy. It's not a good look that the woman is supposed to choose. If he asks all the questions about you and doesn't talk a lot about himself, that's supposed to mean he is avoidant. If he tells you how into you he is right off the bat, and seems like he really likes you, then he's love bombing you and run. <laughs> Be your authentic self, but then don't tell them too much when they like ask you questions like, what are you looking for? Because then that gives them the rule book to play you. So what am I supposed to do? So don't date anyone who wears a hat. Don't date anyone with like it's slightly mediocre Instagram. Don't date anyone who seems interested in me. Don't date anyone who doesn't talk about themselves or ask too many questions about myself. What am I missing? There's too many roles. I give up, you guys. I'm done. Yo, stop playing around. Y'all gotta chill. Stop giving out this. <laughs> the information that is being given out right now is trash. There is too many rules to engagement. I'm not going to follow all these rules. And look what you are. <laughs> look what you all are doing. Y'all are just tainting the minds of poor young women listening to all this garbage. That's a fact. Yo, if you wear a hat, that doesn't mean anything. That just means you like hats. If you approach women and you're more confident, that means you just spoken to more women and you feel more confident in your energy. You feel like you're in a good space in life. You can maybe have some fun. If you don't pursue, as women say, I'm busy. I was doing a lot. I worked three jobs. I'm tired. I was taking a nap. Right? So all these different things, it's like, yo. <laughs> when I put these ads on the screen, it's just to show you guys and gals out there that we know nothing that is going on right now. No one has it figured out. So as you continue to give advice, quote unquote, for my people listening on Spotify, drop a rating. It's like, yo. It's not going to work. You have to trust your gut instinct in real time. That's a fact. Because when I go out on dates, when I used to go out on dates past tense, I was paying attention to what the person was saying. Like, I don't care. That's a fact. That's a lie. I appreciate if you look good. If you have a nice body, you got some cheeks on, you got, you know, I'm not going to dive too deep. You have a nice, amazing body. You like to take care of yourself. You're healthy. As I like to say, that's just a positive on the side. That's like the sides, a biscuit, some fries. Let's say we're at Popeye's. I'm looking for the chicken sandwich, which is your mental. But on the side, you got your fries and your biscuits. That's your body. If your body is nice, your toes look amazing, your lips are soft, you got some long hair. Cool. That's a side. But I'm looking for that chicken. I came here for the chicken sandwich. I want to know what your mental is like. So if you start to say very odd things, your boyfriend cheated on you with three different women. 
you let a guy get you pregnant and you aborted it. All this crazy stuff. All these things I hear on. I'm like, yo, I didn't want to hear that. I didn't. You didn't have to tell me that that fast. Let the let it build. Like, what are you into? Are you into fashion? Like, let's build up to these things. Just know, let's let's jump into it. What's your religion? What's your what's your religion? Like, y'all, the social skills that we are trying to maneuver through now are terrible. That's why I don't go outside because I like to think of myself as someone who knows how to communicate. I can have a conversation. I can relay my thoughts to you and make it make sense. That's a fact. Hence why I'm talking to you into this podcast, trying to break down some of these nuances in dating. It's like, yo, okay, we get it. We understand now. We we can kind of assess the situation. But at the same time, like, how do you navigate? Because the same thing she said in that video are the same things I'm seeing. I'm like, uh, this, this don't make no sense. But then when I say something, I'll, I'll chime into the comments. I'll say something. And I just got like three or four women just, you don't know what this means. And you don't know what that means. And you're toxic and you're single and you're done. I'm like, bruh, s- stop projecting your life onto me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just telling you that's not, that's not what it is. Like that's n- really, n- I'm a guy. That's, n- that's not what it is. But it's like women giving information to women, but women don't date women. Women date men. And they're not necessarily listening to what these guys are saying. So, hey, continue not to continue to be celibate and continue to get manipulated, as they say. I don't know. Like, I'm just here to laugh. This podcast is based in satire. You might as well put it under comedy at this point because... (laughs) I sit around and laugh and I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to give you any advice. I'm just as confused as you because once you get a woman that digests all that information, she's listened to all that and she thinks everything that these people online are saying is Bible. What do you do then to talk her off the deep end? She's on a 80 foot cliff about to dive headfirst into all this TikTok information. What do you do? Like, do you just say, be like, no, nah, you shouldn't really take that stuff too seriously. It's the internet. You'd be like, oh, I agree. I kind of can't understand where you come from. Or you do you just leave it alone altogether? And she's bad. She's an eight. And her second cousin is Michael Jackson or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, these people are connected. Like, you know, she looks good and she has a good family dynamic. She got some cool people running around in her family. Do you just leave it alone? Or do you just try to talk her off the ledge, talk her off the cliff? I don't know, right? I mean, what can we do these days? I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to speak on it. I'm just trying to understand where we are all going. <laughs> because if you if you ask me, I don't I mean, not even me. I got some friends that are like very pessimistic when it comes to dating. Very just like, man, dating is terrible right now, but I digress. But actually, let's continue to speak on it because that that may be where I want to go with this one. Is dating that bad? Is dating terrible? Let's see. Let's see what's good. (laughs) Because the stories continue to, I mean, the stories continue to get worse. All right. Um, So I went on a date last night. (laughs) Whenever someone, (laughs) whenever the person starts the video saying, I went on a date last night. Right then and there, I know it's going to be negative. And I just do. I know it's going to be a terrible story. But hey, continue. You guys know I do that. And um, I'm at a loss for words. Like at this point, like I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, because it's clearly me, right? Like, like the, the male population is broken, but like maybe, maybe it's me. So I'm texting this guy. We met like a week ago and it, we had plans to go out. One week. I'm just say that one week. This is still a straight. This is a stranger. Why do we continue to date people? We don't know. It doesn't. The fear of missing out. That's what it is. The fear of FOMO. The fear of missing out. 
You're not missing out on anything. The dates are going to continue to be trash. Tonight. And he had texted me earlier in the day and he was like, oh, yeah, like, I just want to make sure that we're still going out. And I was like, yeah, for sure. We're still going out. Um, I had ghosted him like two days prior because <laughs> we were like texting like late at night. And he was like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm watching a movie. And he's like, should I come over and watch it with you? And I was like, yeah, probably not. And then he was like, oh, I was just kidding. And then I never replied because you're not going to even fight yourself over to my apartment. The fuck? Um, Dang. But yeah, so anyways, <laughs> he texts me. He's confirming that we're going out. He's locking in the details. I'm like, yep, I'll be there. Da -da -da. Get there. We're chopping it up. I meet him at his apartment. Doesn't offer me anything to drink, which was like a strike. But like we were chopping it up with. And bear with me, this story is kind of long, and she is, she seems sad. It's okay to be sad sometimes on these videos, but she seems like very, like, just monotone. So you could fall asleep on this video, so just bear with me. One of his roommates and his roommate's girlfriend, so, like, I didn't really think much of it in that moment. So we head over to this little dive bar, and he sees people that he knows. And so he, like, walks over to say hi to them, and <laughs> I, I paying for the drinks. I love it. Not a big deal. It was like 12 bucks. It was a dive bar. Who cares? So. And if you didn't just catch that, she paid for the drinks. She paid a whole $12. A whole 10 and two ones. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm laughing a lot because this is, this, this is just, some, just, this is just hilarious. If me as a guy, I'm speaking cold, hard facts. If every time I went out, I only spent $12 or $24, even $32, I would be going out all the time. I wouldn't care. You get a 12. You get a 12. You get a 12. What? <laughs> and she's crying about a 12? Come on, man. Like, also... So he's chopping it up with them. He's over there for like five minutes, comes back over, apologizes for being rude. And then we're just talking. <laughs> we're like connecting, da da da, right? It's going well. I go to the bathroom, I come out from the bathroom. He says, Do you want to go to the one across the street? I said, Sure, let's go. So we walk to the one across the street. We're still chopping it up. As soon as we go in there, it's the same friend that he saw at the other bar. Not thinking of it. We're playing some pool. We end up playing with this couple. The couple was super nice. The girl and I are hitting it off. At this point, she and I are at a date. <laughs> and next thing you know, like we lose, and he like gravitates back towards his friend or this girl that like he used to work with, right? Like 30 to 45 minutes go by, and he's still talking to her. So what do I do? I I leave because I Damn. have these two drunk girls. Like telling me, like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Should I go get him <laughs> for you? Like, no, no, we're not gonna do that. No, why did this man text me this? Yo. Why did this man? How do I? Why did this man text me this? Yes, I left. I went. I took my ass home because that's where I should have been. Wait, hold on. Oh. What did he say? While I'll admit it might have been rude to me talking to my friend that long, you could have just talked to me. You didn't have to just up and leave. <laughs> You are a savage. You you are a cold human being, and I'm gonna. <laughs> he texted her after. Why would you even? I don't get it. These folks got <laughs> jump paying for my own fucking drinks and shit. Yo, stop the madness. Yo, there's two different ways to look at this. There's two very different ways to look at this, and I'm going to break both of them down and make. To just to make sure I don't forget what I want to say, the first point is this guy is a complete asshole. He just is. He <laughs> and the second part is she is soft as cotton. I'm sorry. People aren't going to like that. They're not going to agree with that the most. But I'll start with her since most people are going to take offense to that part. Yo. Say something. Do something. You have to react. If you don't care, you don't care. And man's not going to care. So you get what you ask for. If you're not asking for much, you're not going to get much. And I get it. You have to be cordial. You have to be respectful. 
I understand, but everybody isn't moving and operating in that time. Hence how we're getting to all these videos. Hence why you're putting the video online. So after five minutes, five, not 10, not 15, if a guy you're dating is talking to you and he has stepped away, he's talking to some rando stranger he used to work with. He probably already busted down, but he didn't tell you that, whatever. And they're having a better night than you two are. At five minutes, you need to step into the situation and say, I'm giving you some healthy advice. I'm looking at you as little sis right now because I saw you crying in the video. I'll give you some advice. Step in and say, yo, bro, you're taking me out on a date. Are you not supposed to be courting me right now? What are you really doing? I can go home because I just bought your drinks. What's good? And flip it, right? Flip the situation. If you really want to be, you got to be tough. You got to essentially step into your masculine energy and boss up and elevate and say, yo, I didn't really come outside for you to be dating this other woman. Do you two guys want to date right now? Like, I thought you invited me out. That's all you got to say. And once you say that, leave it at that. Ideally, if I was in her situation, I'd say all that and then still leave. I'm still bouncing. Like, I don't got time for you because you could do whatever you're doing right here. But most women aren't going to do that. Most women are going to give the second chance. I understand. Perfect. And if you didn't realize, I'm taking up for her because this was not cool. What he did was not very cool. It's kind of lame. But on his side, and I'll go into his point, brother, once you go and jump off the deep end head first, it's a wrap. There's no coming back. Once you're talking to another woman with a woman that you just took out on a date, all you have to do now is continue to dig your own grave because you're not going to get both. That's just a fact. You're not going to get your cake and eat it too. So now you've come to a fork in the road. You have to pick. Is it the girl you invited out on the date or the girl you've been talking to for 45 minutes? And this is the conundrum. This is where you're going to fumble. The girl you took out on the date sees you talking to that other girl for 30 to 40 minutes. So now there's a bad taste in her mouth. It just is. It's a wrap. It's done. The guy doesn't know it, but she sees it in real time. Hence, she broke it down in the video. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, the new girl that you're talking to that's laughing, that you're lying to saying, ah, oh, that's just my friend. We just met, whatever, that you're lying to. Once you try to take her home, unless she's a cold, hard freak and she doesn't care about anything in life and she might even be on like a line or two, she might have smoked some weed, you might have, somebody gave her some shots, whatever, unless she's just out of her mind, which isn't a good thing. Don't do this at home. Don't lean into that. I'm saying that's a negative. But ideally, she's going to look at you like, oh, you a liar. Like uh, you came out with her and you trying to leave with me. It's not going to work like that. That's like going to your wedding, going to Vegas for the bachelor party and trying to get married to a prostitute after like two days. Like, bruh, you stupid. <laughs> like, like, take this girl out, court her. If she's not cool, she's not cool. And then you two need to communicate and be like, yo, you're not my speed. And then hit the other joint up a day or two later. Like, you don't got to be in real time trying to court two women at the same time. Now you bouncing back and forth. Wasting your energy, looking stupid, looking like that, like you, you doing something that's a little bit idiotic. I'm not going to hold you. If the story that she's telling is true, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there, right? We've all, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say, I've never tried to finesse this play, but at the same time, you're just going to fumble. I'm sorry. You're not going to win. You're going to drop like two points, one assist. You're going to be on the bench the entire game. You're getting like three minutes. You might as well say you're injured at this point. Like, you're not going to win. So I look at it like that. And when I look at these videos, I'm always like, damn. Because sometimes the women have specific points that I can agree with. And then they go off the deep end. It's just like, oh, you should have just stopped. But with her, I'm like, yeah, if somebody's inviting me out, I'm putting myself into the situation. A woman invites me out. We having a good night. I pay for the first round, whatever, but I'm a guy, so that's normal, whatever. I pay for the first round, and we're bouncing around. We're bar hopping. She sees a guy that she knows, a guy she used to work with. They give a little five to 10-minute chit-chat, whatever the case may be. I don't really care. Boom. 
we hit another bar. We're having fun. The night is progressing. We're playing pool. We're having fun. Cool. And then that same guy bops over to the bar. And now you guys are talking again. Right then and there, my brain is going to tell me fight or flight. My brain is going to tell me, bro, you don't need to be here anymore. And you can do two things. And the two things my guy, my mind guy, my guy mind is going to tell me my masculine energy, as they like to say, <laughs> it's going to be like, okay, did this guy knock her down? Like, did this guy smash? And if I think that I'm going to be like, I'm just, okay, cool. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Whatever. Not the biggest deal. But if I think and if I if I see you key key and ha ha and laughing at it, all, touching them on the shoulder, if I see a lot of that. I'm going to be like, yo, take care, love, enjoy, and I'm going home. That's just a fact. And yeah, that's a little bit embarrassing as a guy. You never want to really run into that situation. You really want to hold down your masculinity and be like, yo, bro, stop talking to my. She's for the streets. That's what you're not understanding. When women say they have a roster, that's what they mean. Because their roster is a subtle roster. It's not my roster is like a male roster because a male roster can have them on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. No, it's not the equivalent of a male roster. It's the equivalent of a female roster, which is, oh, I got. Jason that works over at the Foot Locker, he toxic, but he know how to cook. I got Eric who works at Coca-Cola downtown. He, you know, he likes to do nice things. He has a good network. I went to his Christmas party last year. Oh, I'm hanging out with Anthony. He always jogging on the belt line. You know, he be trying to exercise. He be trying to keep me in shape. It's like that. It's like different scenarios. It's not all guys. That they can just kind of like house in and bring in night overnight or week over week. No, it's these little one-off scenarios that just keep tapping in. Two days here with Anthony. Two days here with Eric. It's just all around, just spreading so much energy, just spread thin. Then they meet a guy they actually like. Somebody is stepping up to the plate. Because they don't know that she has two other guys on the side. And I'm sorry, I flipped this. <laughs> it's now looking like a negative for the women. I'm sorry, I had. To. <laughs> but yo, that's what we run into out here. We run into a lot of different scenarios. So what are you going to do? You got to navigate accordingly. And it's going to come down to how you communicate. Because like I said, this is a podcast about communication. And what she didn't do in real time is communicate with this young man. That's a fact. She didn't say, yo. What are you doing right now? Like, uh, and she didn't really, she should have had to really go into like a, like a very much like a Nicki Minaj bag. And when I say that, I just mean like, not give a fuck. Like whoever's feelings you hurt, the feelings are hurt. Who cares? Yo, can you please step away from my man? This ain't even my man, but for this 10 to 30 seconds that I'm about to rip into him, this is my man. Yo, please never invite me out again or anyone even in life, because you don't understand it yet. You invited me out. You're taking me out. You're trying to court me. Why would you now then just start flopping around and frolicking around the bar? Like, that's all you got to do. You really just got to elevate and boss up and tell people in real time you're doing something that's dumb, stupid, and slow. That's just a fact. But hey, this ain't the podcast about community. <laughs> This ain't the podcast about giving advice or, with, or about dating. It's a podcast about communication, and you can communicate in real time. I think y'all think we feel some type of way when y'all say, oh, so you selling pussy? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care that you think I'm selling pussy, brokey. I wasn't talking to you. The nigga with the cheddar? Can you move along? You're blocking my view. I can't see the nigga with the money. She said, yo, she is paying. You have to, be, you are being paid. That is wild. Broke, 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 by broke. You ain't got it. Oh my goodness. She is out of pocket for that. She said, no, 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 no. Brokey, you cannot get the box tonight. You have to pay for this box. 
Jesus Christ, I would never dare. <laughs> that is not my community. I'm sorry. I have to step away from that one. That one I cannot indulge in. Yeah, that's just too much for me. I don't know if I can do that one. That's too... When it comes to all that, like, <clears throat> I'm not into the transactional hangouts. Like, it's just, it's just not fun. I have to be actually attracted to you. I just can't be like, okay, you have a nice, amazing body. And I want to spend upwards of five to maybe even a thousand dollars to spend a couple of days with you, maybe a weekend. I fly into Miami. I see a nice one with a BBL. She's from Colombia. She's very much Americanized. And now it's like, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know if I'm going to go there. I'm sorry. I'm not going to go there. So, yeah, for me, it's a no. It's a big ass no, but some dudes will do it. Some dudes got the money for it. You know, it is what it is. I cannot indulge. I'm sorry. I cannot dive into these situations. They are not for me. And yeah, fellas, you got to learn. You got to learn quick. If you don't have that bag secured, if you do not have that bag secured, I am sorry to tell you, some women just will not give you the time of day. You could have a six pack. You could be in school getting your PhD in something very grandiose. You might be set up for a win. You got a nice car. You don't got a BMW like eight, but you got a nice car. You got a Kia Serena or something like that. You know, you got a nice, maybe a RAV4. I have no idea what people are driving. You got a truck, I think. You got a Challenger. I don't know. I say that to say this. You're not getting your time. <laughs> Which is crazy. Like, yo, when you can be out here calling people broke, we live in sick times. We live in sick, sick times. You can't tell me anything differently. You can't tell me people aren't just mentally done. Because when they say people got mental health issues, there's a large form of mental health issues we're not even diagnosing. That's a fact. But I'm not getting into that because I don't care. This ain't the psychological podcast about how to get better at, nope, not doing it, not doing it. I'm not here for it. This is wild, but let's speak on this because this one caught me off guard and I never really understand what this person is saying, but I always try to be like, okay, I'm going to not kick her back in. I'm going to give her some grace. Let's see what's good. So what I'm about to say is going to piss off a lot of men, but I don't care. I got a comment on the video in which I talked about men who emotionally manipulate and Oh, coerce no. women by not being honest about their intentions in order to sleep with them and the comment said what y'all just be too easy for real and i blocked this person <laughs> because they seem to be committed to misunderstanding me and fuck you i'm not above the block button so how are you going to degrade women and call them easy after allowing them to sleep with you after you've manipulated them into sleeping with you that's like breaking into some all right, so let's just hold it right there. So the tough thing about this is, the tough thing about this is, what he said, yes, I'm going to agree. Disrespectful. Most women are not easy. Up, up until a point. There's a, there's a threshold. There's a threshold of easiness. I'm not going to hold you. It just is. And that's why I say sometimes men appease. So I'll kind of look at it like this. What he said, in layman's terms, instead of buying the $20 flowers or the $30 flowers from Whole Foods, you go online to that bouquet site and you get the $500 flowers and you get them delivered to her job around all the people she works with. Now, that has nothing to do with sex. That has nothing to do with being easy. But at the end of the day, you're doing something that's a love language, as they say. Acts of service, a gift. Sure. Then you double down. You say, okay, hey, what do you think about, you know, us going to Malibu and going out to this private ranch? They do these, you know, late night private dinners. What do you think? You double down. Now, I'm not going to say this person is easy at this point, but at that time, they really think you care. It's all a care factor. And the more you care the easier that person is going to be to sleep with. I'm just right there. So that's why she's saying manipulation. That's why she's saying, and I'll break a lot of this down at the end of the video, but when you look at it like that, it's just like, and that's the tough thing. Women don't have the opportunity to make men easy because men aren't having sex at such a rapid rate 
yeah let's go back into the video i ain't gonna get into all that let's go back one's car hoping you'll find something and being like well, it's your fault for owning a car and possibly having what? things in your car for me to steal. Do you realize how dumb you sound? Second of all, <laughs> the ways in which sexual inequality I don't between even know men what that and women meant. are per perpetuated is because men have this luxury of not having their actions define their character so men could engage in like morally and ethically depraved behavior like manipulating women facts that's a fact and not the manipulation part no one's manipulating you you're an adult you have to take accountability for your actions etc 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 but what she just said is a cold hard fact men get judged off of face value things what type of car you drive how much money you have what type of shoes you have on how you're dressed where you work who's your family do you go to church like all these things that do not matter and that's what women get caught into. And that's what she just said. She just broke it down. And women get judged off the opposite end of the spectrum. What type of person are you? Are you good with kids? Do you like to cook? How are you from a cleanliness standpoint? Things that actually matter when it comes to dating. She just said it. I'm taking her words. So when you look at it like that, yo, would you not want to just be like, okay, I get it. This guy's in a Altima, it's fine. He's in a Toyota Camry, whatever. He's getting from A to B. He may not have the most money saved, but he's actually a good guy. He's trying to figure it out. Nope. Hell no. Exactly. Let's get back into the video. Sleep with them and having multiple sexual partners, no matter how he got those sexual partners, i.e., grape or manipulation or coercion. coercion, and having society separate those depraved behaviors by his character. Whereas women don't have that luxury, we are defined by our actions, meaning that if we sleep with someone, our character is defined by those actions, disregarding the yes because men don't put a large emphasis on money it's the money it's the things if a guy didn't have to appease and get you all these different things it wouldn't matter but the fact that now he has to do all of that, those things it's a transaction every time he does something he's looking at his wallet so he's looking at you like a commodity he's a consumer you're the commodity He's trying to get you. That's why you don't have that luxury. You can always change it. You can do something to change it. You can start paying for everything. You can start taking him out. You can start courting him if you like. If you want to change it, I don't know. That's what you have to do. Or you can actually start tapping in mentally. Not just hanging out, but asking different questions. You see all these books back here? I continue to point them out every video. If you think I haven't read all of these books, you are sick. Yes, and I loved them all. They were great. So it's like, yo, enlighten me mentally, right? But maybe not. I don't know. Circumstances in which that event happened. If you want to be a sexist piece of shit, then oh, by God. all means, go for it. But just know that women are starting to wake up to this and we're not sleeping with you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Do not sleep with these men. If these men are not treating you the way you want to be treated, don't do it. A lot of women are going celibate, right? I'm not in that group. I love women, so we continue to have a good time. We continue to have fun. We continue to go on dates, travel, turn up in the club, whatever the case may be. Because I know how to compromise. Let's just meet each other halfway. But when you can't meet each other halfway, you're going to have a rough, rough go. And that's a fact. And what she's speaking to is so far off the deep end. She is too tapped into the algorithms. She is too tapped into the matrix because she said so many different words and generalized so many different men. It was sad to see. If you're talking about guys and you're saying you're being manipulated, coerced, tricked, swindled, she, like she threw in an analogy of being robbed. If you're doing all that, you're gone. You're gone. You're in the matrix. You are gone. The algorithm has you sucked in to a deep, dark rabbit hole. 
I am sorry. You might be in the queue as well. You are queuing on. But no, you just have to realize if anyone was watching that video and if anyone saw that, you have to realize like, yo, you no longer have the luxury of guys not understanding who you are because there's different types of women. There are tons and tons of women out here that are very different. So even though, and I can assess accordingly, hopefully I can, I try to, if I see you in Mykonos or Santorini or somewhere lavish, you in Positano, that doesn't necessarily mean you live a lavish life. That doesn't necessarily mean you live this grandiose life of luxury. You could just be flexing. And as a guy, that's what I think. I'm just like, oh, she just out on vacation, maybe went with her parents. I have no idea. She seems nice. Let me tap in. Let me see what's good. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, when women see men doing lavish things, he's in the Porsche. He's on a yacht. He's flying coast to coast. He's in Colombia dancing bachata and samba. She equates a lot of that to lifestyle, money, and essentially a come up. It's a come up for her. She's looking at it like, oh, if I'm incorporated into his life, now I can get all these perks. I get to travel. I get to dance bachata and samba. I get to go to the nice restaurants. You know, it's like, and it's crazy because I don't know you. So why would I just incorporate you into my life? Like, I don't know anyone. It's like, I'm, I am legend. I know no one out here. I don't got any friends. Like, yo, if my life is already elevated, why would you think I would not be taking out my mom and my dad, taking out my friends, hanging out, being around the people that I can confide in and trust? No, nah, I'm going to just start incorporating a random stranger into my life. And don't get me wrong. Men do it. Men do it all the time. I've seen different stories about inviting to these games. You got will calls. You got flying people out. I'm not doing it. The energy is not that good. I know the energy is not that good. As a guy, <laughs> if you are constantly bringing the situation along, you're you're tug of war with this situation. It's you and another woman and you're leading every single scenario. You're doing everything. You're paying for everything. You're setting up all the dates. You've bought her a couple of nice items. You've booked the Airbnb. You've booked the flight. Like at that point in time, what is it? You telling me you don't have no nice, cool women around you that can just have fun with, chill for the night, save your bread. None of that. You got to go appease and fly somebody out from Atlanta to Las Vegas. You got to take somebody from LA to Miami. I don't know how y'all do it. I really don't. And that's what she's speaking to. She's saying, yo, these guys are appeasing to everything just because they know the women will like it. Well, yeah, what else would I do? I'm not going to just, what am I going to do? There's one mission in this game. This is mission impossible. There's one mission. You know what the mission is. That's why you're slowly but subtly becoming celibate, which is fine. I respect it. It's your body, your choice. Do your thing. There's a lot of different scenarios around here, so I get it. It's a kind of like a safety mechanism. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's two types of guys. There's the guys that'll buy you everything you want. Every time they step outside, they don't care how much money they spend. It is what it is. And then you got some guys that are not going to spend a dollar. And it's up to you on what type of guy you meet. Right? I would think just levels, levels to the game, like I said. Elon Musk might, might be on level 1,000. I might be on level 15. You may be on level three. We out here. We all in the game. You got to figure it out. And that's why I say this is the podcast about communication, because you really do have to talk and get to know people in real time. And things I continue to see on TikTok and why these videos continue to be made is because people no longer speak on the phone. I don't get it. Why when you meet someone, you, you swipe right, you swipe left, whatever, you match. You're now talking and dating someone on Hinge. You get their number. They get your number. 
why do you two not jump on the phone and chop it up early and see what the two people are about? Every time I say that, I just hear excuses. Oh, I don't want to build it up. This person could be cool on the phone, but not cool in person. Oh, I don't want to tap in because that's a waste of time. I just want to meet. It's a broken record. Why not try something differently? Why not maneuver in a different way? Because if you keep getting the same results, once you want to change the experiment, like y'all are going through a sick lab experiment right now. Nobody wants to change the formula. It's like, swipe right. Oh, I met Timmy. He's cool. Oh, he ghosted me. Delete the apps. Okay. Uh, Redownload the apps. Okay, cool. We're back. Swipe right. Oh, damn. Damn. Dan just played with my time. All right, cool. Damn. All right, delete the apps. Okay, we're back. Like, it's the same formula. Date a couple of guys, get jaded, delete the apps, go on a healing journey, come back. Oh, date a couple of guys, delete the apps. I'm on a healing journey again. My friend is too, so now I have an accountability, but like, woy oy. Like, I don't get it. And I see the same videos over and over again. When they start the videos, I went on a first date. I met this guy on Hinge. We just met a day ago. Right then and there, off top, I know the video is going to go right in the trash. The video, like, your dating experience is trash because you're talking to a stranger. And you keep making excuses about not getting on the phone. What's the worst thing about getting on the phone? Because the phone is so easy to me. I get on the phone all the time. If I don't know you and I think you're a stranger, I'm getting on the phone. Whether that's for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, depending on how cool you are, I'm getting on that phone because I don't want to meet you. And you say things to me that I could have heard on the phone. You telling me you got a crazy baby daddy, I could have asked that on the goddamn phone. You telling me you just lost your job and you stay with your parents, sucks to suck, but I could have asked that on the phone. I'm sorry. You just got out of a relationship two weeks ago and you already back out here dating? I could have asked that on the phone, bro. And I done been in that situation before. So it's like, yo, I'm not letting y'all folks play with my time. I'm going to sit in my house, drink a little bit of tequila and talk on the phone with y'all. And if y'all are cool, boom, let's link. What are you about first quarter? If you are lame, I'm sorry. I'm never going to speak to you again. It is what it is. Let's just leave it alone. We do not align and we are not equally yoked. Let's just call a spade a spade. because how long can you continue to meet strangers and think you're going to get different results? How many random strangers do random acts of kindness for you in a day? Just think about that. Let's just think about it. How many people you meet? Say you live in a big city. How many random strangers? Hey, bro, here's five bucks. Go stay hydrated. Get some lunch on me. Go get some coffee on me. Hey, what's up, girl? You know, I saw you. Look, I bought you this jacket. I thought it would go nice with this. How many people are doing that? Random stranger acts of kindness. And it doesn't always have to be buying something. It could be so many different things. But it's the same concept in dating. You're meeting a stranger. And it's even worse because they have an underlying agenda of what they want to do. They either want to be courted, taken out to the fanciest restaurant, and traveling and flown out. Or they want to have sex, which is the craziest thing. <laughs> one person wants to have adventures. One person just wants to lay down and have an amazing time in the sheets. But how you get to that is through communication. You have to speak on the phone. And if you continue to meet randos and think you're just going to be courted, that's no longer the case. Because as we saw in the first video, we already know the cheat code. You keep telling it to us. Every time you post your videos online, we already know what time it is. On today's episode of Men Ain't Shit, I'm just going to get ready because I don't want to talk about it, okay? But I decided to just put makeup on to make myself feel better. I'm going to do my hair. And you know what? Like, I put Dior blush on, so I'm definitely not going to want to fucking cry that out. 
at all. Fucking put Dior concealer, so I'm definitely not crying that out at all. When it comes to dating guys, my advice is don't. They fucking think that we're stupid. Like, boy, the way I will find shit out without even fucking trying. Like, I'll just be minding my business, bloop, and I just find shit out. <laughs> like, literally, God be showing me his red flags, and I'm like, you know? So, like, <laughs> so, like, then when, like, I don't even want to fucking know the truth. He shows it to me and I'm like, God, that's real petty of you. Like, you are so petty. Like, girl, Miss Girls, no. Like, I just, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. So, like, in conclusion, if you were thinking of settling down with a guy and being loyal to him, <laughs> don't cheat. Play him. Period. Shout out to that sponsored ad. And the wildest thing about that is her name. Her name is City Girls Up. <laughs> no, City Girls are down bad. I'm sorry. You didn't, you look traumatized in that video. You got on the Dior blush. You doing your hair. Man's probably just stood her up, ghosted her, left her on red. Whatever the case may be, now she done jumped into her phone and she is lit. She is livid on the TikTok. She is 38 heated. When you're in those scenarios, there's nothing else to do but just buy yourself something nice. Whenever people do crazy things to me, either I get ghosted, I have these wild, terrible dates. And this is not now, but back when I was like actively outside, I would just buy myself something nice, something I liked. It could be something big, something small. Just treat yourself because these folks won't. And she is in the camera just heated, crying. She just finished crying. Now I was like, damn, who do I tell? My friends don't care because I've said it 10 million times. My parents definitely don't care because I never bring anyone home for the holidays. So they have no idea who I'm speaking on. Hey, it's getting different out here. What can we do? What can we do out here? We can't do a thing. We live in sick times. Nobody cares anymore. And I don't even want to speak on that too long because I just think everyone is on savage time. The more attractive you are, the harder it's going to be to date. That's a fact. We are in a war of attraction because the more options you have, i.e. it comes with how attractive you are. So if you're a very attractive woman, you're getting courted by everyone. You got dudes jumping in your DMs. You got dudes trying to talk to you at work. You got dudes running up to you in the grocery store. If you go for a run, you got dudes honking the horn. You're getting all this attention. All this attention. You have no idea how to decipher this code. And that's why you have a roster. And on the guy side, they're getting all this attention because they can do all these cool things. They're going to Italy in the summer. They hanging out in Miami for the winter. They just hanging out. They having a good time. They're in the Urus. Lit Lamborghini, if you don't know. Like they just having a very fun time and they're getting all the options. There's women shooting shots in their DMs. When they go on vacation, there's women tapping in, trying to hang out, trying to live that cool lifestyle for a day or two. So many different vibrations out here. When those two people try to come together, it's not happening because once one thing, one thing is all you need. Once that person does something that the other person doesn't agree with, we are now in a battle. Person didn't respond in a timely fashion. I got the ick, as women like to say. The girl said I'm busy. Oh, here we go. It's just so many different things. So I say, yo, we are in a war of attraction. You really have to look at it like that. And you can't tell me anything differently because when I do go outside, that's what I run into. It's just different. The streets are different and I can't speak on it. But I did want to speak on this video. And I didn't know where she was going with this one. And I really didn't watch it in its totality. But I watched like the first 10 seconds and I was like, I'm going to save this for later. So let's see what's good. I'm watching this just like how y'all are watching this. And I'm going to see what she says. And if she gets boring, I'm going to cut the video off and just kind of talk my shit. But we'll see. We'll see what's good. We'll see. We'll let her rock out. 
in real time. Let it rock out in the free world because we are dabbling in the dark arts, right? Hit the like button. Don't let the algorithms box you in, as I like to say. I'm going to tell you guys why it is crucial, important to have sex on the first date. <laughs> Hear me out. So recently, hey, let's I was saying, it up for that. Hold on. Hey, we got to respect these types guy, of women. We were taking things very slow. We had like 10 dates before actually having sex. Before we had sex, I had a conversation with him. I was like, hey. Do you have like any kinks, any crazy kinks you want to share? He was okay. like, no, no kinks, nothing crazy. Interesting I was like, okay, turn. Cool, whatever. We go to have sex. And at first, everything is fine. He was fine. Dick was fine. Things were going great. <laughs> then he starts to talk. And I know what you're thinking. Sometimes talking is like sexy, good. No, not what this guy was saying. Oh, no, no. Let me just reenact this for you. I'm him, okay? Yeah, yeah. You want me to put a baby in you? Yeah, you want me to put a baby in you so everyone knows you're mine? You want me to get you pregnant? Oh, wow. Dried up like the Sahara Desert. I'm just laying there like, what the fuck? Then he goes, talk back, talk back, say something, <laughs> say something. <laughs> what the fuck do you want me to say? Yeah? You want to be a single dad? You want to pay for my abortion? It is okay to have kinks, but communicate to them because... Here's the thing. Months of talking, out the door. Not interested anymore. Have sex on the first date. Facts. Have sex early and often. You should, just to get those urges off. That is wild. Cuz gotta chill. Oh, man. What? <laughs> I can't even speak on this one too long. This one is wild. This one is wild to me because if you think you're going to get some of this off, you're just not. And... I guess I'll go to her overarching point. Have sex early, yes, because if you're talking to people for three, four, five weeks, trying to get to know them, and you guys haven't laid down in the sheets yet, you're probably wasting your time. I'm, I'm just being, honesty is the key. You're wasting your time five weeks. If you don't have that sexual tension that you really want in the sheets, just leave it alone. You don't even have to tap into all that. Leave it alone. It's not for you because energy should be full charge, full go. It's like back to the future. They're trying to go use the little DeLorean. To, you need speed. Speed is key. So that means first date, second date, third date, fourth date. But if you start to go into 10 dates, 20 dates, you know, because the sex might either be trash or it could be like this. And this one is not that bad. You can run into a complete different scenario. She may want you to just slap her in the face constantly. I'm not going for that. No can do. Nope. 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 Because women will say that. Women be like, yo, choke me out. Nope. Nope. I can't go for that. No can do. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing all that wild stuff y'all like to do. And when she said kinks, that just essentially means what do you like to do in bed as a fantasy as a sexual pleasure, how do you get off? That's what a kink is for all the people that don't know out there. So it's like, yo, when it comes down to it, yes, you want to get her in that digmatized state, as I like to say, but you don't want to do it in a wild way. <laughs> and this guy was wilding. He's tripping. He's saying all the wrong things. Are you wilding? Y'all just met. Why are you even putting that into the universe? Because words are power. And if you feel like you want to have a child, don't speak it into, if you don't want to have a child, do not speak it into the universe. If you're trying to have kids, go ahead, say it nonstop. Oh, this kid looks amazing. No, no. Continue to speak it into your universe and continue to see it happen nonstop. The law of attraction, if you haven't heard. But yo, it's indifferent out here. The streets are definitely different. You know, like, I feel like me and y'all are in it together. If you're watching this, if you've made it this far, it's like, we in it together. What can we do? Because I'm inside in the studio recording the pod. <laughs> I ain't outside with these folks. I cannot do it. I can't hang. I'm not, I'm not mature enough to hang because all I'm going to do is just be pissed off and aggravated and sad. And I ain't trying to live that lifestyle. I'm trying to be healthy. I'm trying to exercise. I'm trying to eat good, travel, all the things. And I can do that by my goddamn self. So when I look at it like that, I'm like, I'm not really going to come outside. It just is what it is. 
But hey, we continue to rock in the free world, right? I digress. This is the Furious Robinson podcast. If you haven't told a friend, we're trying to hit a thousand subscribers. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we up.